Hey guys, Media Bottle, it's Chris Tomer here with this afternoon weather update. We'll look at all the new data and some new trends here. I've got four bullet points today because there's so much to talk about. Northwest flow is happening right now. Montana, Tetons, northern Idaho getting good snow up there. Um, then a whole storm system will come down, the main one of the period, and wrangle all that moisture, spread it across the Intermountain West, dive down, and become an Albuquerque low um, through the 23rd. Colder air, a lot of wind with this. Then there's a cutoff low, which is going to sit in Southern California for days. It actually won't eject out of California until like 26, 27, 28, and then move into the interior after that. So it's a slow mover. It's going to drop heavy snow in the Sierra, uh, 21 through 24 while it's sitting there, and then another shot of snow coming in the 28th for the Sierra. Um, in the northeast, we can finally talk about some big snow. One to two feet coming from two different storm systems. One, 23, 24. Another one, probably 28 into March 1st. So there's a lot to talk about. Let me show you the current setup on visible satellite. There's our cutoff low. Big low up here, main one of the period. Another big low behind it. You've got a northwest flow bending down like this. That's dropping all that snow through Wyoming, Montana, and northern Idaho. So eventually that low will break loose, this one right here, and drop down and spread all that snow through the rest of the Intermountain West and then it becomes an Albuquerque low. Now until that low becomes an Albuquerque low and then actually moves away, this low will not do much of anything besides sit and spin in snow in the Sierra. Then it will fill that void by moving. Uh, the void of the previous low moving. So then it will eject, but not until the 26, 27, and 28 period. So it's going to be a while. I wrote about it this morning on my blog, chrystomer.com. Take a look at it. Here's Jackson Hole this morning, 14 inches in 48 hours with very strong winds. There's the pattern. That's the jet pattern from this morning. Let me show you what the afternoon data looks like. It's very similar. Cutoff low finally coming out of California. It will move across the west, uh, spreading all that snow as it does. Um, so good jet support, a lot of strong wind with that thing. Let me show you what the timing is going to look like with this. It's on the blog, but I'm going to take this full. So there's Tuesday morning, northwest flow. Here comes the main low down on the 22nd, heading towards Albuquerque. Then it moves away. Now that leaves space for the next low coming in, um, 24, 25, which is going to be coming down and cutting itself off there to finally make its move. But again, this doesn't actually eject from California until 26, 27, and 28. So it's a waiting game, and as it sits there, it's going to drop heavy snow in California. Back to the blog. I timed out all the snow for Jackson Hole, for Telluride, and Alta. Look at all the snow that is yet to come for Alta. Um, a lot of snow. A lot of snow yet to go for Jackson Hole. Telluride will do okay probably one to two feet there. And there are my totals from this morning, but I'm going to show you the ones from this afternoon with the updated numbers. So this is the rest of today to, uh, through the 22nd. So you've got the main low dropping down, and that's going to spread all that snow through uh, the Wasatch, through Bryan Head, and through Colorado. Most of the snow in Colorado is I-70 south. Um, a little bit of snow in California, but a lot more yet to come. This only runs through the 27th. Another 15 in the, uh, in the Wasatch, or in the Tetons during this time period. That's awesome. So here's period two. This is the 23rd through the 1st of March. Look at California. So you got the, you've got this cutoff low in this energy diving into this deep trough, and it's possible we see 40 to 80 inches of snow during that time period. Eventually that low will eject out. That's why you see so much snow in Bryan Head, and you've got another couple of feet in the Wasatch during this period. Keep in mind, we had uh, two feet in the first period and another two feet in the second period. We're looking at four feet of snow between now and the 1st of March in the Wasatch. Another 19 roughly in the um, Tetons. And in Colorado, we're looking at quite a range of totals, depending on your location. Another foot there through Aspen Snowmass and Crested Butte and Steamboat. Another 20 over Wolf Creek looking good through Red Mountain and Silverton during that second period. All right, special, a couple of specialty maps here. So this is the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Grand totals between um, 220 and 31. You can see it's about a foot, 
along I-70 and north, generalized. Some areas get more. Um, here are the southern mountains, and they're going to get crushed. Grand totals, 220 through 31, potentially one, two, maybe three feet of snow here, um, depending on location. But there's a lot of snow, the bottom line, that is yet to fall for the southern mountains of Colorado. Next specialty map, like I was saying, the Wasatch between now and the 1st of March, potentially four feet of snow. Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. Unbelievable. It's going to be so good during this period. And one last stop. The northeast, uh, one to two feet of snow. And again, there are two storms, so it'll fall, you know, as a total of both storms. Um, 223, 224, and then again at the end of the period, 228 and 31. So it's a combined grand total from both those storms. All right, guys. Uh, Appreciate you guys tuning in here for this update. Enjoy all this new snow and definitely be safe. Take care.